This is a yellow-tailed swan flower, a rare flowering plant that can only be found in the Dampa Tiger Reserve in Mizoram. Situated on the Lushai mountain ranges, the forest is not accessible by vehicles. One needs to walk to sight these species. A road widening project will soon cut through this forest. The Dehing Patkai Sanctuary in Assam is often called the Amazon of the East. Till day, more than 47 mammal and reptile species, 293 bird species and 310 butterfly species have been recorded here. Over 37% of this forest region has already been mined and more is going to be opened up for coal mining. Just a few days ago, in the eco-sensitive zone of Mukundara Tiger Reserve in Rajasthan, two tiger cubs were spotted. But this joy perhaps is short-lived as this forest region will soon be opened up for limestone and masonry mining. Roads, rail, mining, power transmission lines, these are some of the developmental projects that are encroaching upon some of the India's most pristine ecosystems. In the next few months, India is set to lose these ecosystems to 30 plus developmental projects, all of which have been cleared by the National Board for Wildlife recently. In the last four years, between 2016 and 2020, India has lost more than 57,000 hectares of forest land to over 3,000 plus developmental projects. Before any proposal could get a green signal from the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the National Board for Wildlife, the Forest Advisory Committee and 10 expert appraisal committees need to approve the projects. Once they approve the proposal, it is placed before the ministry for a final decision. But the ministry rarely goes against the decision of these committees. Following the announcement of the nationwide lockdown against COVID-19 in the last week of March, the Wildlife Board meeting to decide on the fate of these projects were called off. But soon, the same meetings were rescheduled to be held in the first week of April. In a departure from what is seen as an established norm, these meetings were held via video conferencing, citing the COVID lockdown scenario across the country. About 30 plus projects were cleared in just one meeting. In a virtual conference like this, it is difficult for anybody to closely look at and scrutinize the maps of these proposed projects. In fact, According to the experts, almost 40% of these projects require an on-site inspection before the board could arrive at a decision. Citing seamless economic growth and development, the Prakash Javdekar-led ministry has been clearing projects with an urgency that has never been seen before, let alone in a lockdown prompted by a pandemic. In Karnataka as well, multiple projects were cleared in the sensitive areas of the Western Ghats, as if the meetings were held only to sanction these proposals rather than seriously deliberate on the ecological damage that these projects could cause on the region. The Sharavati Valley, which has seen its share of unsuccessful movements in the past to protect the region from the environmental degradation, is home to several endangered species, including the lion-tailed macaque. However, the board has now given nod for the Karnataka Power Corporation Limited to carry out the survey and geotechnical investigation inside the sanctuary. The state is already facing flag for approving the hubali ankola railway line earlier this year, cutting through the Kali Tiger Reserve in the Ghats. However, the National Highway 52 that connects Hubali with Ankola on the coast runs almost parallel to the proposed railway alignment and remains underutilized till this day. The expansion plan of the Kaiga Atomic Power Plant extending into the buffer zone of Kali Tiger Reserve was also approved last year. A power transmission line and a corridor will cut through the forest. This is home to several species including tigers, black panthers and Asiatic elephants. 
as deforestation increases, the human-animal conflict is likely to increase even more. Due to the increased contact with the wild animals, new pandemics similar to the COVID-19 are likely to emerge. We are entering an age of pandemics unless we safeguard our forests. That is why a group of about 300 conservation scientists and allied professionals has returned to Union Minister Prakash Javdekar last month. Alarmed by the swift approval of environment clearances, they have even asked the minister to withhold the clearances until COVID-19 subsides. Whether the government will consider these concerns and request seriously is something that is yet to be determined.